Welcome to the first episode of No Longer a Teenager. My name is Elon, and I am super, super, super excited to actually start this podcast here um, with my co-host Stefanos. Say what's up real quick. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Basically, uh, this whole podcast is started because both of us, uh, for the longest time, we've been trying to just kind of escape the whole employee life and really start our own business ventures and start a bunch of... Um, and start earning money in different ways than just off your hours. So for myself personally, since the age of 12, I've tried it all. I've uh, played uh, I've played Call of Duty competitively. I've streamed on Twitch. I've made YouTube videos. I opened my own social media agency. I moved to financial services industry. And I've been trying to franchise and do a lot of stuff uh, out here locally. And as time goes on, I want to bring you guys on that journey. I want to grow together and I want this podcast to not only motivate you guys to succeed with me, but also open your eyes to a lot of stuff because, well, now I'm only 19 years old and I've come a long way, obviously, um, compared to a lot of people around me. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so, so the reason for this podcast is because I want to open people's eyes the same way that a lot of mentors have opened my eyes. So... That's uh, that's the biggest thing for me. And uh, yeah. so, uh, as Elon said, my name is Stefano. I uh, ever since high school, basically after high school, I was just working full time. I used to work at a coffee shop, um, doing pretty much all the hours I could, always trying to make more and more money. And then at one point, I realized that maybe, you know, I love my job, and maybe this isn't something I want to do forever. Maybe I want to have money be earning itself, basically passively for me and uh, without me having to work as many hours and such. So basically ever since then, I uh, ventured into a lot of things. When I was 17, I started working for a telecommunication company. I started uh, as a sales representative. Right now I move up, I do uh, corporate accounts for uh, bigger companies. I also work in financial services uh, like Elon as well. And again, this podcast for me as well is just kind of a way to basically express all the thoughts I have, the feelings I have about uh, you know business and all kinds of personal topics as well, like self-awareness, for example. So basically, I'm really happy to be here, really happy to start this first podcast and uh, talk to you. Yeah, yeah, let's, let, honestly, let's get straight into it. I want to right away start off the bat with probably the first thing that's super, super important when uh, you're getting into anything, just self-awareness, sure. as, as you just like started to mention. Um, that is probably the one and biggest thing that changes your life because... It's like uh, when you start reading, they tell you the more you the more you find out, or the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you keep going. So when you start actually paying attention to yourself, you start being more aware of like what you do on a daily basis, your habits, what are good, what are bad, and, and also you start really picking up on what you can improve upon, right? So you have to yeah. always have that going on, you know, to realize. Yeah. And like you said, whether it be in business, it could be in relationships, uh, working out, anything. Oh, so every aspect, any aspect of life. Of life every basically. aspect, literally, exactly. yeah. Because it's, it, it's one thing to go through the day like aimlessly. Yeah. It's another thing to never reflect on what you do. But that's like, <laughs> like the saying says, you know, if you don't decide the day, they'll mm -hmm. decide for you, right? Exactly. So you gotta, it's kind of like, the way I see life is like, if you don't decide what you're gonna do in your life, if you don't push forward, if you don't take initiative, you know, life will decide for you because life is always going to throw curveballs at you, no matter what. For so, sure. Like you said, let's talk about it. All right. So <laughs> basically, one of the things that is really important to me is realizing that it's never too early to actually start. Um, a lot of people laughed when I was like 12 years old and I was like, yeah, I'm going to play video games for a living. And I made that happen throughout my teenage years. And whenever I had to go out or anything, I normally had money because of that. Um there's a lot of people that will laugh at your dreams. There's a lot of people that won't believe in you. There's a lot of people that are going to try to bring you down and tell you, no, this is what you should do. But right now, more than ever, there's so much access to information out there. There's so many things that you can literally... I mean, you could, you could monetize anything. Yeah, think about it. You can, fully. If you're really good at something and you have a passion for something, you can make money out of it no matter what. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people also... It's like They say you shouldn't take advice from anybody who isn't you. And it's, yes, you should take advice, I feel, but at the same time, they're not in your shoes, no matter what, right? So even yeah. if they could have, you know, a situation just like you, but then again, they're not you, right? Yeah. So why are you, you know... It also depends on what your goals are. I mean, sure. if you really want to be successful and you want to, you know, be the youngest trillionaire or whatever, <laughs> um, you can't do that when, like, by listening to people that don't have any money saved, uh, people that are living paycheck to paycheck. They're not going to give you the right advice because even if it seems like they know what to do, 
they just haven't done it. You want to take your inspiration from people that have achieved what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So you got to look for mentors that will bring you to the right space, that will bring you to the right um, mentality and everything because success really it's all it's all in your head it's, 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 it's all, all mental it. and a big part of it too also is environment like we were talking about this yeah. just the other day like you know if you're in an environment where there's a lot of negativity people aren't motivated people aren't inspired you know it's kind of like it's kind of like you know going to a dead end job I feel is not a dead end job if the people there have bigger thoughts and bigger beliefs and yeah. you know they have a bigger image in their head of what they want to do yeah. you know a dead end job you could be working in, a, in a, a great place with people who are just very negative and then the whole thing just turns into a dead end job yeah. you know what I mean so it's like exactly no because it's, it's about you don't realize it sometimes but the people you surround yourself with impact you in a way that you won't even actually process Absolutely. like if Absolutely. people keep reminding you oh you should you know, stay in school, you should uh, work this job, you should work that job, you should be making more money, you should do yeah. this. Or even, why aren't, why aren't you, you know, spending your money on this, or why aren't you, yeah. you know, it's like... Yeah, there's just, it's just the constant reminders of what they say. They're, they're, they keep bringing it up, and it, it's going to lay on you, it's going to affect you, whether you realize it or not. So what, like, what I'd recommend to do, and what I've tried to do, is over the years, I've literally cut away everybody that doesn't help me get to where uh where i want to be and there's people that you know they're in my life that uh you know i i'm okay with but the people close to me the people that i listen to every day the people that i talk to every day it's all people that are trying to achieve something bigger than us something that is working towards a goal that we all have in common so i mean we call each other like almost all every day all and it always starts off with um <laughs> yo like uh how'd you do it man how'd you become the world's youngest trillionaire or how is it being this successful or it's just constant pushing always, each other always up. just a reminder that you know what you you're gonna be bigger than who you are now yeah. no matter what because like like you were saying before you know some people in life when they're they have that negative mentality they have that kind of um you know they, they push down on you in that way yeah you outgrow them you know and that's why oh, you sure. you have to let them go because the thing is it's only hurting you in the end and sometimes you know you just want to be a better a better version of yourself like the way i see it i say this all the time is you know if you're improving every day even if it's just a small improvement yeah. if it's a step towards the right direction you know it's kind of mm -hmm. like i'd rather be stuck in traffic going yeah. where i need to go than flying down the highway and you know in a place that's <laughs> gonna be bad for me you know what i'm saying so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like um, Will Smith has said this multiple times. Um, when he was a kid, his dad made him build a wall, mm -hmm. and he only let him put one brick a day. Okay. So he had to really watch the process. Yeah. Over time, he built it. Yeah. But it's about going a little, slowly by slowly. Will. Slowly by slowly. That's <laughs> it. And a big, a big part of it, too, is, and this is something I struggle with a lot, is I have a fear of falling behind, but then again like what is falling behind you know we see people yeah. like Grant Cardone you know doing incredible things much <laughs> later in their lives you know not even when they're younger so me being 19 or us being 19 right now a lot of times I, I sit there and I say oh you know what like I wish I was doing this or I wish I had this or I wish I had taken the time to invest more in this opportunity mm -hmm. rather than this one and then I look back yeah. on it and I say to myself you know what <clears throat> dude you were literally born yesterday <laughs> like, <laughs> like you were born yesterday man come on like give yourself a break you know yeah. Well, that's, a, that's the thing. Um, the more you look at social media, the more you look at... Yeah, uh, like, the sure. other day, I really realized a lot of my insecurities came from social media. A lot of my doubts and a lot of my pain comes from social media just by looking at, you know, all these nice houses, all these nice cars, and you start to question yourself. It, it makes like, you think at 19, like, you filled. You exactly. Know, in a way, exactly. it's like, wow, why don't I have any of this? And then you, you have to stop and say to yourself, like, I just started my life. Like, if you look at... You know the lifespan of a person. You you you're at the beginning twenty five percent. Yeah. You know. No, literally. Like literally. So. Yeah. So it's it's about realizing, and even if you've had opportunities to do something and you haven't, for example, it's not like you missed out. No. It's experiences you learn from. You learn from anything, whether you try it or not. You learn from it at the end of the day. If you didn't do something, you might regret it. If you do it and you fail, you learn. You never actually fail. You never actually. Like, nobody ever actually hits that rock bottom that people describe and that people That's are so scared of. It's really about taking those risks and trying to move forward in life. And I feel like a lot of people, they, they kind of, you know, 
it's it, like you said, it's in the mindset, right? So it's yeah. simple. I feel like a lot of people they just don't think that they could do it themselves. Like they, they sit yeah. there and they, you know, okay, I want to have, you know, a business where I inspire people and where I help people and where I have, you know, happy, uh, a good environment, people working for me. But then it's like they don't understand that they're able to do it, and it, it's kind of like at the end of the day, you should prioritize yourself because yeah. you are the most important thing in your life. Yeah. And people don't people don't do any of that. And I'm I'm prime example of that. Like all my life, I went. You know, caring about other people, and I, I never cared about Stefano. That's what I did all my my entire you know like so far. But you know, I'm getting to it, and I'm I'm yeah. I'm going to the right direction right now. So yeah, well, it's yeah, it's very easy to to kind of let let people walk all over you, or let people um, take control of your life. A lot of people. If you go to them, you're like, hey, why are you still in school? A lot of them do it solely for their parents. Exactly. I've literally seen people that the second they got their degree, they left it at their parents' house. They're like, I'm going to go do what I want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of people, a lot of people do stuff for the wrong reason. And you really have to prioritize yourself. You really have to find your own importance. You have to realize how valuable you are and really pay attention to that and take care of yourself. You have to love yourself because the food that you put into your body the knowledge that you put in the people you surround yourself with it's a question of how much do you love yourself if you find that you are not worth better things you will not get those better things if you find you are not worth being successful you will not be successful it's all up to your head it's all about how you think like i know um this was probably three years ago this is when i uh i was basically running my social media company like 90 percent of the time like that's all i was doing and um one of my friends, he goes to me and he's like, man, I wish I could do what you do. You're like, you can. And I'm like, literally, <laughs> you, you can anybody could. <laughs> like, literally, Anything anybody you want to and do. everybody is available. Like, exactly. They could. There's, there's, listen, there's a market for anything, anywhere. And as long as you're willing to, because we always talk about this, mm-hmm. it's not, nothing's easy in life. Nothing's yeah. free, you know? Yeah. So if you're willing to really put in the energy it takes, really put in the time and really kind of, you know, understand that you at the end of the day you're you're the prize right so you're you're yeah. worth everything to yourself and you owe that to yourself oh yeah you know you you owe it to yourself to create the best life that you can for you and your family and for people around you who inspire you you know like right now we have a group of friends like us we have a group of friends mm-hmm. that are just amazing and i always think about it every day i'm i'm doing something for myself and in the end of the day i'm going to do something for them as well yeah. so it's always like mm-hmm. you are the prize and i feel like investing in people is a big thing too yeah. You know, investing in other people and, and giving the opportunities to yeah. other people as well. What's important is, is finding your why. And that might be a, a whole podcast of its own, but For really sure. understanding to the core why do you want to do something, that is your that is the motivation you'll you'll need. Like if you want to lose weight, for example, if you constantly, constantly, constantly remind yourself why do you want to do it, you will achieve it. If you want to gain muscle, That's if you sure. remind yourself constantly why you want to achieve it, you will. If you want to save money, you remind yourself constantly why you're saving, you will save your money. There's a lot of habits that people just, they're not cautious about. They and, overlook it completely. They and just overlook it. Honestly, I, I, I want to talk about that. I actually, overlooking the little things is probably one of the biggest regrets I've had in my life. Um, when I took 30 days off social media, I realized One of the first things I realized is all the little micro habits Mm. that nobody notices. Nobody ever pointed them out to me. Like what though? Like what do you mean? Somebody asked me to to, like move uh, some furniture or whatever, for example. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it later. Mm -hmm. These little things that nobody points out because everybody does them. But after a few days of me being alone with my thoughts, I literally hated it. I'm like, I have to change that. And I started being a bit more proactive. And it's a lot of things that sometimes people will never point out and you have to realize it for yourself. So you have to perfect the little things, the, the small, uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning your room, for make, example, making your bed, anything, make your bed. You have to it's perfect the small it. wins, the small wins exactly. that make the bigger wins, you know? And it's kind of like, exactly. you know, if you get up in the morning and you, you put something on that just makes you feel good or you feel good about yourself, you know, you don't yeah. have to put something on. They just, you feel good about yourself and you, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, you know what? you're a winner because at the yes. end of the day that's what you are and, and your, your mindset should reflect that and your once your mindset reflects it mm-hmm. your your body and your, your energy will reflect it you know you'll go yeah. somewhere and you'll see let's say I'll give you an example you know I, I walk into let's say a car dealership and you want to buy a car or whatever and you see someone who's successful mm-hmm. you know you 
They could be just looking like an average person, but you know just by the way they're relaxed. Yeah. How they're how they carry themselves, you know? Yeah. They're super relaxed. They're just super and actually very giving and, and kind to other people. Oh yeah. And just very like, you know what? It's gonna be okay, no matter what. And they're exactly. and no matter how busy they are, they always make time to invest in other people, no matter what. So yeah. you know it's it's like you said, uh it's all it's all about you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the, and the talk about investing in other people. I mean, I try to network as much as I can. Like my my contact list on my phone is yeah, you have. Uh, like there's <laughs> there's people to like you can be scrolling for days. And yeah. I literally like I, I remember talking about this the other day. My friend is like, "Yo, whenever like there's any issue, you always have a guy for like yeah. for whatever." Like, it's true. You know, it's true. whether it's for clothes, jewelry, uh, phone, <laughs> anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, like I like the connections really change your life so what you want to do and it, it's a bit difficult for people that are that are shy and uh, people that are a bit more introverted but you have to try to socialize you have to try yes. to network as much as you can you have to get out there you want to you want to have people that support you you want to have people that love you and you want to do the same for them back um i, I just find want, yeah sorry, sorry uh, i was going to say like <laughs> i find in our group like the support systems yeah. that we have in place are yeah. probably the best i've ever had in my life like I know that if I ever mess up, people will be there. They will number one let me know. They're yeah. gonna, like they wouldn't sure. hide it, and they'd be like, "But honestly, bro, you can learn from it. You could do yeah. this." And it's about it's about finding the solution rather than focusing on the problem. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was gonna talk about. It was was our friend group. You know, we have a bunch of people who are just very motivated, very inspiring, very uh, you know, caring, and and they're just people who who want to who want to go somewhere, who want to advance, mm. and a lot of times. You know, there's a lot of them that I, I brought into the company I work because, yeah. you know, and, and you brought into the company that you work and, and we basically, we always help each other out. And by doing that, like you said, investing in other people, yeah, that's what furthers you. And a lot of times people will say, oh, you know what? Um, it could go for any job. You know, you, you're hiring somebody. Well, who would you rather hire? The guy you know who's going to show up and work hard or the guy that, you know, he could be qualified on paper, right? Mm -hmm. He could be qualified in many other ways, but you don't know the person. So a lot of times even bigger, you know, higher level jobs will always hire people based on what other people know because that's the best way to go for them. Yeah. You know, are you, let's, yeah. let's say I refer Elon to a, to a company, mm. they're gonna wanna hire him much more than they're gonna wanna hire anybody else who just presents themselves yeah. in, the, in the office. And that's, 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 an, that's another place you know, where connections make a huge difference. If you get a referral, you will most likely get the job. Exactly. Um, if you just go drop CVs everywhere uh, or resumes yeah. everywhere. Chances whatever, are much lower. Yeah, your chances yeah. are way lower, like yeah, significantly sure. lower. And I want to get back into into the conversation of self development. I want to get into the conversation of how it all started and kind of the first steps I I took in my opinion, and then you can talk about how, how your journey started. You started a bit a bit after mine. I'd uh, say. Well, quite a bit after yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I find, we're still young. We're still yeah, young. So at the end of the day, but yeah, exactly. But I, I still find like when I met you, for example, I wasn't quite all the way there. Same here. Um, I remember. I'll, I'll, I'll get right into it. this is actually a true story so I was with this um, I was with this girl and um, I broke up with her with the most cliche um, I need not, to work on no, I'm like, it's I'm not like, you it's me I'm like I need to work <laughs> on myself um, I'm just not who I want to be right now and <laughs> she, like literally people are like that's such a cliche but literally I kid you not I took a full year I didn't you were being honest about it. Yeah, like I was you, fully. You, you I fully meant it. I hated would've... who I was. Yeah. <laughs> so I took a full year, and I'm like, okay, we gotta start working on my, like on myself. So I started reading. I started uh, focusing more on like just different aspects of learning, whether it's about health, uh, whether it's about any topics that actually interested me. I started paying attention to the small stuff. I started wasting less time uh, playing video games and doing things that didn't really serve stuff. a purpose like they did before. And um, I really started paying attention to myself. I started taking care of myself better. And after a full year, I remember I, I caught up with her and I was like, and literally after the first conversation, she's like, you're so different. Like you changed so much. Best, I'm, like best, she was best feeling, by the way. Yeah. Best feeling is when somebody was, looks at you and they're like, you're yeah. so different. You know? Yeah. No, honest. And she was proud of me. Like, it wasn't it wasn't a bad um, breakup like it was it was literally very supportive and, I, and I'm very appreciative of that but it's the fact that I took that time to work on myself and I do want to develop a bit more on 
the actual steps that I started taking, but first I want to hear uh, your story. What got you on the? On oh, I mean, the yeah, similar mm-hmm. thing happened well, after high school. Essentially, I, I I started working, and I just remember getting my first paycheck, and I was just like, "This is something that permits me to move forward in life." You mm-hmm. know, and it's not even as much about the money as people would think. It's it's just about the fact that I I put in a certain amount of effort, and I I got something for it. Mm-hmm. You know, and by doing that, I realized that. You know, the more effort I would put in, and regardless of whether it's a, it's a job or, you know, uh, let's say like a, yeah. your own business, it's gonna go somewhere. You know, no matter what. And there was struggles throughout those entire two weeks. Yeah. You know, that I was waiting for that paycheck. There were struggles throughout that whole thing. And when I finally got it, I I appreciated it more than anything. Yeah. And it's kind of like, that's where I understood that I had to be working towards something, and yeah. not just for something. You know. Also, that that does I want that brings two topics that I wanted to talk about a bit. Number one. To clarify, your your job is mainly commission based. Yeah. Um, the hourly doesn't really matter in in comparison. Um, number two, just just for the people th- uh, to know, but number two, when you're young and you want to get into business or anything, it's okay to have a job. Like a lot of people, yeah. they think it's like That's one or different. the other. Yeah. They they don't realize that it's okay to like I would even argue I'll go as yeah. far as to say as that you need your job you because can, your job is how you're going to invest there into you your company like, your job is what permits you to actually have the the capital and the the yeah. means to support your your side hustle which can later grow into your business right? exactly right? so exactly. people who say oh you know what quit your job man you know I was doing that for a long time it sucked I got a raise from my butt like you yeah. know what at the end of the day you need it yeah. Because you have to pay your bills, you have to eat in order to start your business, yeah. to start your, you know, your content. So and like at the same time though, here's here's where it gets difficult. A lot of people they get sucked into the fact of oh I have a job, um I like my paychecks. They get comfortable. Yeah. And that is another reason why I uh, before I was mentioning remember your why. Yeah. Because when you are working, the goal isn't. Oh, um, I want to move up in this work. The goal is I'm gonna be the best I could be, all the time, improve everywhere. Yeah. Improve yourself in every aspect of life, and it's gonna improve you at your work. You're gonna get your promotion yeah. simply by working on yourself, and you're doing that because later on you want to do something different. You want to find ways to invest into. You want to grow. Yeah. In you want to grow. grow. Yeah. I mean, you you want to achieve a success that's not ordinary, right? Yeah. I mean. You want to, ideally, you don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. No. You want to have money working for you. You want to have people working for you. You want to have a business. You want to have something where you don't have to put in that much effort. Yeah. I mean, the cash flow quadrant is probably the best example of this. Absolutely. You could be in any industry. You just have to pick where you want to be in it. Um, you can be a cashier or you could own the restaurant. Yeah. Like it's exactly. completely up to you, but you have to make that decision for yourself. So for a lot of people, it's perfectly fine to live, you know, any way that you want to. If you want to have a job, if you want to do this, do yeah, it. There's no judgment about anything. Exactly. Like if, you, if you're happy doing some, uh, you know, your, your job, that's perfect. And if yeah. you're happy, you know, going on to something else, it's perfect too. It's every, exactly. everybody has their own, their own uh, path in life that they want to follow, right? Yeah. And it's just about realizing like for yourself, where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Absolutely. Like, is what you're doing right now realistically going to get you to your goal? Like, if you want a Lamborghini, I wouldn't suggest working at McDonald's and saying, oh, I'm going to get a Lambo in five years. That's yeah. not something that could happen. Yeah. But, but then, then again, something really interesting is, you know, my, my boss always told me a story. He says he would always go to the same restaurant every day. Uh, and he would, like his friend worked there or something. And his friend was a dishwasher. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, no one really, like, spoke to him. He was kind of just this quiet guy, and he was washing dishes every day. And five or six years later, he owned four of the restaurants because it was a franchise. Mm-hmm. So, like they say, you know, don't don't underestimate the power of minimum wage. You know yeah. I mean? don't, don't underestimate but it, the but power. But it's also, what, I, what I'm talking about is he had the awareness to realize the there, opportunity. Exactly, yeah. So, he didn't stay in that, in that kind mm-hmm. of tunnel vision as we speak, like, exactly. mindset of, you know what, I'm just going to get my pay and, you know, okay, well, on to another pay week. You know, yeah. it was kind of like... I'm gonna get my pay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stack this all to the side. I'm gonna stack it to the ceiling, and then I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna invest yeah. it all. You know. So yeah, because it's about it's about realizing where you're going. 
Yeah. If you're not looking for these opportunities, even if one's literally staring you down, you will not realize it. You will not see exactly. it. We don't see what we don't look for. And there's many reasons for that. There is sometimes, example, when it comes to finance, I've sat down with a lot of people. I've sat down with people in their 40s, 50s, different age groups. And as a 19-year-old, I'm able to pick up on on financial habits. They probably look at you and they're like, what are you, what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> uh, well, I'm just... I, I personally, I really, really try to learn all the all these different financial concepts and stuff like that. I know how to manage my money, for example, and, I, and I'm trying to teach as many people as I can. But when I'm 19 and I'm sitting in front of somebody that had my my entire life two times over yeah and they didn't pick up on it it's not that it's it's not that it's something for them but it's like i was saying if we don't know that the information is out there exactly. how are we going to get it if you like 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 Grand Cardone says, if you have uh, a problem with you know a certain aspect of finance because you have the wrong data it's not cuz you're stupid you know yeah. what I mean? no one no one in this world is is um is you know completely just unable to do anything it's just that they yeah. have the wrong information they have the wrong environment i think information environment and kind of like you said the awareness is the yeah. is the biggest thing you know because yeah. you, you you see people who you know they work hard right and so they're the hardest working people on the planet you know mm-hmm. and then they just do the same thing for years and it, it's fine but like, like they don't really advance in any way there's no growth yeah. when you see them when you see them five years later there's no growth of like yeah. oh wow you know you started this new thing it's because they don't have the, the, the awareness to kind of mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, when I was in high school, for example, I had my YouTube channel, and there was almost everybody I knew, at one point or another, they've like tried to imitate my my intro, my you know signature. What's going on, <laughs> homies and homies? So that intro, they would try to imitate it all the time. But fast forward a couple of years, right? And this was maybe like two months ago. I stop at a gas station and I see like these two, like these few people from, uh, um, that like I knew from high school and they still watch all my videos. Okay. So whether people are making fun of it, whether people are laughing at your dreams, whether people tell you and try to discourage you 90% of the time, it's because they can't do it. Yeah. It's or, they, or they think they can't do it. Exactly. Like, it's all in their heads. So it's kind of like, well, it's, it's like the quote, whether you think you can or can't. You're probably right. Yeah. That quote hits every single time. I've never heard that before. And I, I really like that. Really? Yeah, I love it. I, I love that quote. It's one of my favorites. Like, the the profoundness of it, every single time, it hits me. Mm-hmm. It's all about how you believe in yourself. And going, going actually speaking on believing yourself, another thing that happened, this was very recent too, which is, uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but uh, a couple weeks ago, I just, I look at Elon, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take more hours at work. Man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a hundred hour work weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna really like my two jobs. I'm gonna like finish one job, go to the other one till nine, ten p.m. and do the same thing all over again. And he looks at me and he's like, you know, as a good friend should. He's like, why are you get, getting sucked into the employee mindset now? You know, yeah. you never were, you never were in there. So why are you going? You know? Yeah. And I was like, I thought about it. I worked the other day. I was like, you know what? He's right. Yeah. What? Why? Why would I take more hours at work? Why? Because of a bit of income. It doesn't. You know. Exactly. We were just talking about this, and like, you know, they're not going to pay me more because I outperform. It doesn't. Yeah. You know. And another thing, like, like I said um, a couple of days ago, my friend he applied for a job at a at a, a new a new company, and basically, interview process was going very well. He's a very hard worker. Uh, speaks uh, multiple languages, and they took him for an interview. And I remember this, This I was sitting in the car, he was doing the interview over the phone, and the interviewer, she goes, listen, your training is gonna be Monday to Friday, eight to four, let's say for four to six weeks, for example. Mm-hmm. And he goes, okay, perfect, but there's just one thing, one of the Fridays out of all of those days, so that's, it's, a, it's like a 30 day training. One Friday, he's like, I can't make it because I have a, a dentist appointment or whatever, like that. Mm-hmm. and she, over the phone, and listen, obviously she could have said this differently, but she said it the real world way. She goes, sir, the business does not change for you. You accommodate to the business. Mm-hmm. And when I heard her say that, just over the phone to, to him, who is a potential employee, and someone they should really hire because he's a great person, yeah. is, is that you know, you, the company doesn't doesn't accommodate to you. Yeah. Right. So being an employee in that way is is kind of <clears throat> hindering in many ways. Actually. I mean, look, 
the reason why anybody gets hired anywhere is because they're going to bring the company more money than the company's paying them. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. The company yeah. could care less. Yeah. Everybody is replaceable. Yeah. The whole... We're back, guys. Right. We're back. Sorry. <laughs> okay. The thing I've heard over and over and over at all times, a job is safe. It's guaranteed. Yeah. Go to college. You'll have well, a guaranteed that's, that's job. Yeah. Go to college. You'll have a guaranteed job for life. And then two months after that person told me that, they get fired from their job mm-hmm. that they've been at for 10 years. Yeah. You know how fast they got replaced? Two Literally, weeks later. As, she was two weeks later. Le- as yeah. they were leaving, somebody else there came. There you go. There you go. It's all about how much the company could pay for what they receive. Someone's going to do it for cheaper, they're going to take that person. They, they, exactly. don't, they don't care whether, you know, uh, the, the, even if the job is going to be done to, you know, it's going to be lo- like, not as well done they yeah. don't mind because the money they're paying it's going to be less no matter what so exactly that's what they're focused on at the end of the day exactly and and just sorry just not all yeah. companies are like this just just yeah to say, you know there's a lot of companies uh, that's that are, actually where i was going to yeah yeah go ahead i find like for us for example being in business i mean at the financial services thing uh, i have i have my own team right mm-hmm. if somebody makes a mistake i'm not gonna be like leave you you're not you're no, not really. you're not good for this like no there's different ways to deal with it and everybody has a different approach and the people that really try and educate themselves on it they are always the best leaders the best uh, coaches the best um, CEOs anything like that because it's all about your approach if somebody makes a mistake realistically what, what most companies do They'll fire them, hire somebody else because it cost them a lot of money. It cost it, them too it was, much for the mistake. There's no, yeah. it's never going to happen again. We're going to get somebody else who's not. But then it. what happens with that is the next person that comes makes that same mistake because they didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Instead, what you could do is go to the person and be like, "Hey, you do know how big of a mistake this was. Let's not let that happen again." Mm-hmm. And you just keep going. You and you you have to you know if they learn from it. Yeah. You you keep it and you exactly them and you keep you keep going with it. You know exactly. But, some people they don't learn they don't learn from the first time yeah that's what happens no but it's about communicating that communicating the importance and finding the same vision with everybody for sure um a good a good leader can literally make a janitor excited to come to work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's all about how you treat the people around you and unfortunately the the reality is at a lot of companies people don't even know their boss Mm -hmm. like they they genuinely talk to them maybe once over their whole career yeah. and they have supervisors that have other supervisors that have other supervisors that's something that I feel a lot of companies struggle with is is the whole you know the politics of it right yeah. you know for the employee let's say the employee has a problem with their paycheck I'll just give you an example mm-hmm. there's hours missing they have to go to one supervisor who communicates to the HR supervisor but that's not the actual supervisor who takes care of the accounts yeah. they go to accounts payable they take care of, you know and it, it becomes yeah. this whole stream of it's like an endless like by the time you get your answer mm-hmm. y- you know the next paycheck rolls around and, and then you know the person's working they don't really think about it so yeah. that's why I really appreciate working at my, the, the telecommunication company that I work at is you know I always see my supervisor and my colleagues all the time and we're always happy to see each other and there's always exactly. you know you're going to kill it this month we got this exactly. let's do it so plus how inspiring is it when you have people that earn millions and millions sure. um directly to you for available sure. at, like to talk to to see how for they sure. think to see their mentality just their, their mindset is just so different like exactly it's, it's, it's incredible I remember I was uh, I was talking to you about this I think I have a friend his um, well his father is very successful and essentially he was just telling me about like you know certain things that his father would say when uh, when they were when he was younger certain like things habits that he would teach him kind of like going yeah. back to like the small things that matter in life yeah right? So kind of habits of like, you know, saving money or, or even just investing money and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he goes, you know, my father, he never gave me any money at all. So his father always said the best thing for a child is for the child to grow up hungry, right? Which yeah. is, I, I understand that. And uh, for sure it works, you know? Mm-hmm. And he always said his dad would give him, let's say, a very small amount of money to go for a month. So he'd give him uh, a small amount for every, every week to go for his month. And his son was working every, let's say, every day uh, after high school. So he would finish yeah. his high school, go to work for a couple hours, this and that. And he worked at the same job for about three to four years and never saw a penny of what he made. So what his dad would do is his dad would take his bank card away mm-hmm. and he would say, listen, every paycheck you get, you're, you're not going to touch it, okay? 
uh, you're, I'm going to withdraw a very small amount of money from it, give it to you, and you're going to kind of base yourself off that every week, right? So he, yeah. first, so number one, learns to manage his money. Yeah. Number two, learns that, actually indirectly learns that you don't need as much as you think you need, mm-hmm. right? Because he's living broke that, already, yeah. you know? What, what happens is when people make more money, they just spend more money. Automatically, yeah. you know? So, There's also, if you don't know what to do with your money, you're going to spend it. Well, there you go, right? Because yeah. you, you just don't understand why it's there. Yeah. So then, like, he just kept going on that for three to four years. And by the time I met this person, like, you know, he kind of grew to be a friend of mine who we helped each other out in a lot of ways, is that his dad, get, you know, said, okay, now, listen, you're, you're 18, 19 years old, I'm going to give you, you know, you can use your money, mm-hmm. whatever. And he had a lot of money because, mm-hmm. you know, he just never saw it and he never, you know, yeah. and now he knew what to do with it because his dad said, look, you know what, you lived off of this small amount every week. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if you can operate on that small amount every week, now that you have all this money, why should those expenses change? Yeah. Why should that become a new car or a new, you know, exactly. things you don't need? It, it shouldn't because you learn to operate on such a small amount of money. So now you know what you're doing. Yeah. Which is, I found incredible. Mm. And this is, this is why hanging out with people who are, you know, much more successful. Like you said, people, mm-hmm. you know, at your work who come in with, mm. you know, a lot of money and a lot of yeah. experience and success. And they kind of have that moment of, they talk to you and they say, you know what, you're doing a good job and keep it up and that kind of brings another sense of, of security to you in a way even like yeah. you know uh, like you said everybody's replaceable but that kind of connection between that person and you it kind of yeah. makes you feel that even if you don't have this job you're currently working at there's always going to be an opportunity later exactly. on you know because for how sure you work. and that's that's the importance of building those connections i mean sure. some people they'll have the opportunity but mm-hmm. they're just going to be too shy to take yeah. it yeah. Or, um, or afraid that's a big one yeah you know being afraid of yeah of opportunities that come up and or no, just, or sometimes, Sorry. sometimes there's opportunities for people and they're like, it's too good to be true. I don't trust it. Yeah. And whenever that happens, like it just goes to show how messed up the world is. Like if somebody's giving you a hundred bucks, don't question it. Take the hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, a, a story that I really liked is there was this reporter that went to Bill Gates one time and she was like, how'd you get so successful? And he goes and he writes her a check. <laughs> and um, she's like, no, no, I don't want the money. I just want to know like what you did. Mm. And he offers her the check again. And she's like, no, no, I just like, I want to know your story. Like what, what makes you so successful? And he's like, when I see an opportunity, I take it. You could have just been the richest reporter in the world. Yeah. And you just declined it. And that's a lesson of sometimes life lines up to give you a certain opportunity to it just happens it just works out that there's way, some people know? that are meant to be in your life there's some mm-hmm. events that are meant to happen in your life and you really have to find those lessons sometimes you're surrounded with people that sometimes you're purposely surrounded with people that are negative yeah. uh people that it's to teach you something you know? yeah, yeah. It, it it i find growing up in a place where there's been a decent amount of negative like negativity around me I think it built my mental toughness to an incredible state. I think that when it comes to actually handling problems and dealing with anything, I find where I'm at now versus where I was when I was a kid is unparalleled. And what I mean when I was a kid, I mean, I used to let it get to me. I used to let all of it really affect me deeply. And at this point, I've... I've built the mental toughness to when something goes bad, when I messed up on one of my investments, when I, um, when I worked out and I'm too sore and something like, and I'm actually hurt or it kind whatever. Of, it kind of makes you eliminate the little problems in your life. You know what I mean? It kind, yeah. of, it kind of makes you understand that, you know what, this is, this happened and yeah. we're going to move on now. And it's exactly. finished. You know, it exactly. kind of, you don't linger on things that you shouldn't be lingering on, you know? So yeah. it kind of, builds that that uh, like you said the mental toughness yeah. yeah it's also just looking at where I'm going rather than where I where I just came from mm-hmm. like if something goes bad yeah it's bad there's no denying that but I'm gonna learn from it I'm, I'm not gonna make that same mistake again yeah. if you learn from what you're doing if you reflect on yourself that's when all the change happens and um yeah, you, like, you're building experience in that way. Exactly. And going like going back to you know, 
where you're going or where, she, where you should, quote unquote, should be yeah. going. <laughs> a big part of uh, what I've noticed from a lot of people that, listen, I'm the first person to, to have taken part in this is, you know, kind of doing, you know, making a move based on your ego. Kind of like, you know, let's say, okay, for example, I own this little coffee shop. You know, every day we have our consistent clients. Mm-hmm. We're doing very well. Everybody's happy. And so far it's been doing well. Yeah. And then you're always going to have that one person. You know what? What are they going to tell you? Open another one. Open a second one. Yeah. Open another coffee shop. Open, open, you know what? Open a third one. You know what? Help franchise it. Yeah. Franchise it. But I feel like a lot of times that's coming from less, less, it's coming from less of a place of like real concern for the business and actual like interest of the business. Yeah. It's coming from more of a place of like, I walk down the street and I say, oh, that's my coffee shop. Oh, that's my other coffee shop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, yeah. No, it, it, you can't Being too rush. Eager, you can't rush yeah. the process. Yeah, yeah, don't be too eager. And I fall into that all the time. I have, like, that huge problem. And I find a lot of that comes from social media. Like, mm-hmm. you see all this Guaranteed. success, you're like, I have to Guaranteed. speed it up. I'm yeah, not yeah, going yeah. fast I'm enough. Doing, I'm doing it slow. Like, what's like, going on? The other day, I, I I texted one of my friends, and I was like, yo, like, I'm actually, like, I've been hardcore beating myself up over the fact that I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. And they literally went there like, you are more successful than anybody I know our age. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not, I don't have a Lambo. They're like, you're, <laughs> you're 19. Yeah, relax. Exactly. Relax. I, was at, I was at work the other day and I was talking to my boss. I was like, you know, I don't have this and I don't have that, whatever. And he goes to me, he's like, you have everything you need. And I, I go, what are you talking about? He said, you have the mindset, mm-hmm. the motivation, you have the work ethic. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're smart. Like you have the skills, like you know how to sell yourself as the product. So you, yeah. you have everything you need. He says, you can have negative a hundred thousand dollars in your bank. You can have negative whatever you want in your bank account right now. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter, yeah. but it's the, it's the skill you have. That's going to take you, you know, it's all the, the, the components of what makes you, you, mm-hmm. you know, like when For I, sure. like when I first met you, I was like, I've never met a guy like this, <laughs> you know, like I was like, yeah. I never, I never met somebody who's like, has this kind of, you know, and, ju- and just for context, like this one time, uh, I want to get into the coffee shop thing. Now that yeah. we're talking about coffee shops. Oh, and the, like, uh, how how we uh, the, how we all started. How we all started. So basically, what happened was uh, I met Elon at a party, but we never really spoke. So that went on for uh, what a year. We didn't speak for like when, when um, we talked here and there, but it wasn't anything. Uh, yeah, anything I'd crazy. say almost almost a full year. Okay, cool. So yeah, so then one day mm. uh, I'm walking through college, and just just so you guys know, I, I was enrolled in college. I went, you know, I was enrolled for three semesters, but I kind of only went to class for one of them so I, I was never really there um, I didn't even go to that college I was just chilling in the in the cafe that there they had over there it was meant to be and yeah I was literally just there visiting another one of my friends and I look who, up who was skipping class probably yeah, yeah well course. everybody skips class yeah, yeah of course. but um, I look up and it was like I saw a ghost <laughs> I, I was in disbelief because we we started a bit before that um, we got invited to a uh business venture oh yeah um yes together absolutely. and that's how we started at least talking mm-hmm. but i knew that like he's into business he's not uh he's not too big on school and uh when i saw you at school i was like no way like i ran <laughs> what's I, wrong you know <laughs> i ran up and i was like well, bro you go here and um and I was yeah. Like, yeah come for coffee <coughs> yeah so basically we uh we went to the coffee shop down the street which was like the local hangout for everybody who was skipping all the time mm-hmm. so we just and I, and I remember just sitting there and it was kind of like kind of like right now we're just talking and talking and talking we kind of got lost in all these these different topics and yeah. we're just going on and on and then we realized that we just we really clicked you know yeah. and it was that that kind of moment that I knew it was it was going to be a, a, a long lasting friendship kind of thing it was it was yeah. it was really good we, we were literally for the there day, for know? for a few hours yeah probably three or four hours just having yeah. having coffee just talking about you know what I don't even drink things. coffee I was just yeah, yeah we're just I water you having water I yeah think. I was <laughs> just there and I'm like yo. For hours, we spoke about every aspect yeah. of life. We related to so much. We yeah. we saw that what we're looking for, this is the it's, right it's like the, this is the right. It's the same thing, and it's the right connection. You know, it's the exactly. So, uh, and that's it. And basically, you know, ever since then, we were always talking about you know being too eager because even you, I I know, like b- both of us, we have those moments in our lives where yeah. you know what, I'm not doing enough, and you're yeah. doing a lot, right? You sure. you really are doing a lot, but I you mean, don't the past it. the past two weeks. If I open my calendar, yeah. I've had every minute planned. Yeah, same. I remember I was literally out with people, and I'm like, I like me being out with people was in the calendar. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I have to leave exactly at this time to make it to this, 
and I had every minute planned and it worked perfectly. And I come back after like a week of having every minute planned because I have one to two days where I have a bit more free time. Mm. And I come back and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like, I am literally working nonstop on multiple just being a better you as well as yeah. other, you know business and stuff yeah multiple businesses working on uh well i've, I've been doing the the 75 hard challenge so two workouts yeah, a day sure. and stuff like that like yeah, yeah you have to fit the time and in, the but. best the best thing with that like my boss was telling me the other day he goes when when you're happy mm-hmm. on the inside you'll never be sick yeah and that was one thing that i that i understood because my just for example my my grandmother she had cancer four times and I just remember seeing her. She was always the happiest person on the planet. I never understood how she could do it because she was sick while working, mm-hmm. while taking care of the kids and everything. So I, I never really understood. But then he was telling me, he goes, when you're happy on the inside, no sickness can stop you. And yeah. that was kind of like the one thing I realized, like when you, you know, when you're not too eager and you understand that this is, this is what's happening right now. And you kind of, instead of, you know, having a problem and, looking away from it shying mm. away from it and you just look at it head on and you say you know what I'm just gonna keep I'm gonna push through this I don't care what happens yeah you know that's, that's a big thing mm. for me achieving eternal happiness is the goal yeah. I mean everybody everybody ever is gonna tell you that their goal in life isn't to be filthy rich it's not to do whatever it's to be happy remember the other day mm. we were like we are talking about this you know yes it's nice to have all the, the cars and the jewelry it's of course it's all nice and the experiences but you know we don't grind to basically buy a Lamborghini. That's not the, that's not the point of, of it. For the well, kind of, but it's not. The, yeah. <laughs> but it's not the point of it. We grind for the freedom of it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't ever want to have to have that that sickening feeling that I had when when I had nothing. You know, and I, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't even get up in the morning because I, I was so unhappy with myself. I felt so, you know, I was like doing bad things and just unhappy with who I was. You know, so that feeling totally. scares me, and mm-hmm. it scares me to the point where I, I never want to ever experience that yeah. you know and I want to always be pushing towards something bigger than myself because think about it with all the things that are going on in the world right there's there's all kinds of things happening mm. we're small right yeah. compared to what's happening so our oh, problems yeah. are, are are still minute compared to you know mm. the bigger picture right so a lot of times when I when I get into this bad mood of like you know being unhappy or depressed or whatever I, I, I kind of take a step back and I, I say you know what where's the bigger picture where's yeah. where what am I what do I want to do and where do I want to be right? exactly. it's kind of like that, that self image thing you were talking about before when you wake up in the morning you know that kind of um, yeah I think you should explain it better oh uh, yeah so the, visual, it's, the it's visualization a, thing that you were talking yeah, about so every morning for the past uh, month maybe or a bit under a month I think now, it was like three weeks from um, I've been doing 15 minutes of visualizing how I want my day to go. I've been visualizing what I have planned for the day and the energy I'm going to have through it, um, the conversations I'm going to have through it, the distractions I'm going to have through it, everything, whether it's even good or bad, stuff. Yeah. even the bad stuff. You have yeah. to you have to make it vivid because your conscious mind and your subconscious mind do not know the difference. If you make a memory so vivid, your mind will believe you have it. It's true. So every morning for 15 minutes, I visualize how I want that day to go specifically. And then right after that, I visualize a movie about my life in the future. Mm-hmm. I imagine where do you wake up? You know, where, yeah. What do you where, look like? Exactly. What are you wearing? What car do you drive? What, exactly. What is your, you know, what is your purpose at that time? You know, so yeah. you really kind of like it's a full out movie that I'm watching from third person mm-hmm. about my life. I know, I I never even knew these details because I just let my mind like free roam. Mm-hmm. I've never That's actually nice. put thought into it. And some of the stuff, I'm like, whoa, that's interesting because I know exactly how the house looks in it. I know how the stairs are. I know what car I have. I know what color it is. I know all the little detail. When I know you, when you drive to your business, you say hi to your employees kind yeah. of thing. You say, you know, you literally, do, I know everything. I literally up, you know? in the house every, every morning that I've done it, I know how the bedroom looks. I know where the bathroom is to the bedroom. I know where I know where the mirror is. Mm-hmm. I see how I look. I go, I have a movie theater in the house. <laughs> I go watch this movie in that house. When I start it, when I start the visualization, I start it from me going to the movie theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the movie starts and then I re-see myself leaving the leaving house the, yeah. and going to the car. Yeah. And the day starts and 
you just see how you how you want your life to be. And I find that super, super powerful. I'd really recommend it. Try visualizing. It works really, really well. The, the other day I was having, uh, mm-hmm. you know, one of those days at work where it's just like headaches, mm-hmm. your phone is ringing every two seconds and everybody's having some kind of problem with, yeah. you know, like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I sat there and I just, I did the visualization exercise that you were talking about. And mm-hmm. I just like, how my day is going to go past this point. That's what I did, mm-hmm. you know? Because I knew that that night after work, we were going for coffee, right? So I was like, you know what? We're going for coffee. All my friends are going to be there. All the people I love, all the people I cherish are going to be there. Yeah. And I just kind of like, I hung up that last phone call and I kind of, you know, pictured what I'm going to do after mm-hmm. and what I wanted to do. So like, you know, like, let's say going to the gym, yeah. you know, I had, uh, I had to go to the bank, I had to do this, do this, do this. And when I, in real life, executed all those things, when I came to the, the, the point where I saw everybody at the coffee shop, I was the happiest person on the planet. I was just very happy mm, yeah. to be there because, you know, I executed all those things, but it wouldn't have happened had I not imagined it in the first place yeah. and been able to kind of understand where I was and where I had to go and what I had, to, you know, in between that, I feel like you figure out how, what you have to do to get there, mm-hmm. you know? So like you said, you know, people who are successful, they don't sit here and say, you know, how do I get there? They start where they want, yeah. right? So they have the goal in their head already and then they figure out, they work they backwards, exactly, yeah. they backtrack. How can I get exactly. there, you know? Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, so I think that's uh, I think that's where Sums we're gonna end this uh, this first episode. Yeah. Thank um, you guys for watching. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. Honestly, I really want this podcast to grow all together. So if you guys have made it to this point, please, um, like you know, subscribe yeah. to it and uh, overall try to share it. Just share it with at least one friend. Send it to somebody. Um, we're we're trying to reach the younger population. We're trying to reach people that are around our age yeah. and let you guys know that hey. We're on this journey with you guys. We're here for you. And I'm going to be answering all the comments and everything if, the, if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and yeah, the goal is to grow together. You're going to see our progress um, week by week. For sure. Um, Just improving over time, yeah, changing different the, the topics. The mentalities. Um, I re- like every little bit, there's something that I try to add. And um, like I recently went from uh, reading a book a month to trying to read a book a week and it's it's an increase in pages let me for tell sure you that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. but um, it's about pushing it's, gonna, it's, it's, gonna it's to about a, pushing ourselves right it's gonna lead so, to an increase in paper too yeah exactly <laughs> so it's about the knowledge that we're trying to portray so sure. um, the knowledge that we'll be bringing to you guys is going to be um, as good as we can it's gonna be. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be real. It's gonna be the realest. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. There's. Yeah. There's absolutely no. There's gonna be days where it's gonna be. Uh, you know, might not be in the best of moods. If something happened during yeah. the day, whatever. But that's no. It's, it is, it's right? gonna it's be. Gonna, it's gonna be transparent. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. the goal. I want to. I want to share clearest. with people the actual experience yeah. of, you know, growing up and, mm-hmm. um. I mean, we're still teenagers, and the podcast is gonna be called No Longer Teenagers, but yeah. we're both turning twenty. Um. In a few in months, the, actually. Yeah, yeah. In, in just a few months. So, um, the transition is something I'd really like to document. For sure. And yeah, so I'm really for excited sure. that we started this podcast. Thank you guys. Once again, thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll Keep see. You. We'll see you <laughs> in the next one.